Today, I'm sharing my review of This Is Pleasure by Mary Gateskill. This Is Pleasure by Mary Gateskill. And that line, This Is Pleasure, comes from a conversation that one of the two main characters has with a woman at the beginning of the book that demonstrates just how creepy and uh, ignorant or, you know, it's, it's not even that the main character is ignorant of, of society's mores when it comes to how men and women communicate. He just goes over the boundaries all the time. That, that, and, and, you know, I should back up a minute. All right. So I read this because it was recommended on the Evening Readers channel as part of one of her shorty September wrap-ups. And it is indeed a very short book. It's 83 pages. It reads very quickly. You know, it's not a huge book, you can see. And uh, I believe it was a novella that was originally published in New Yorker magazine. But it tells the story of a man who gets caught up in the Me Too movement and a woman he's been friends with for the last 20 years. And you get alternating chapters from his perspective and from her perspective, okay? Um, he's talking about, you know, how he thinks about things, why he's done what he's done. He seems to be ignorant of the fact that a lot of what he's done is just plain wrong. It's just plain sexual harassment. And, you know, and, and some of his misdeeds are really bad. Some of them are, are, are less bad. This is not a Harvey Weinstein character. He, he, he's a sympathetic character. He's not a big mustache twirling villain. Uh, he's not even as bad as Louis C.K., okay? Um, but he is terribly inappropriate, and I can see how he caused a lot of discomfort for a lot of women. But there are also a number of women that he's mentored and that he's friends with who refuse to participate in his so-called crucifixion or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the alternating chapters are told from his friend's perspective, and she is a, uh, oops, sorry, she is a uh, woman in the in the editing the book editing industry just like he is, and they met because he interviewed her for a job, and and she wound up not getting the job. She got a job somewhere else in the same industry, but you know they have lunch on a regular basis and discuss things about work, but they also discuss his personal life. He's married. He's got a daughter. He, he's married to a much younger woman. You know, he's a British guy. He's he's affected. You know, I sort of picture him as a Charles Nelson Riley type, but. But, uh, but yeah, he wears muted clothing, but, uh, but he always has an affectation of a scarf. And I would imagine that their friendship is probably similar to that of maybe Diane Keaton and Woody Allen. You know, she's a loyal friend, but she's also aware that, and I don't know this because, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't been privy to any conversations between Diane Keaton and, and Woody Allen, but I would imagine that there have been plenty of times where Diane Keaton told him, look, man, what were you thinking? Come on. And that's exactly what the female lead in this book does several times. You, you can just picture her going, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that. What what, were, what on earth could you have been thinking? Did she slap you? And so it's, it's a short book. But one of the things that I liked about it is it's not a book about black and whites. You know, this guy's obviously done some things that are wrong, and he's completely oblivious to, to how wrong they might have been and why he got in trouble for it. Not completely oblivious. On some level, he also knows. In fact, at some point, he even mentions, you know, and he's talking sort of obliquely about the Me Too movement, but uh, but he mentions that, you know, right now, everybody's angry and wants to get somebody, and they can't get the king, so they're going after the court jester, which is how he sees himself. But, you know, I know a guy in real life who also thinks of himself as the court jester, but everybody else thinks he's just the biggest creep in the world. He's scary to them. So I didn't get the impression that most people in this book thought he was scary, but everybody brings their own experience to these kinds of interactions, which is why being respectful and keeping a certain level of formality in your relationships with people you know, can, can be a really good idea. And this guy blows way past the idea of formality to, to casualness, to intimacy almost immediately with, with everyone, including his friend that, that, that 
you know, half the chapters are told from her perspective, but, you know, during their first lunch together, he's incredibly inappropriate with her, which is where the title of the book comes from. Uh, well, not exactly, but there's a conversation that he has with a woman that starts out where he says, this is pleasure, and uh, and and she's just horrified. Because what are you thinking, dude? Um, I don't want to get too much into his behavior and what he's done because I don't want to spoil the book, but I will say you don't get to see the entirety of his downfall. This is something that's ongoing in the book. Uh, the book starts, he's already gotten in trouble and lost his job. And then most of the book is, is told in terms of flashbacks. She's relating her experiences with him. Um, and they were good friends, so he confided in her about a lot of things. And it's also about him talking about his experiences and justifying to himself why he was rude or victimizing with these women, depending on your perspective. But he's not entirely an unsympathetic character. I, I think it's hard to walk away from this book thinking, oh God, he should be executed. Or, oh God, this guy should have no career forever anymore, except maybe washing dishes somewhere. And and, and that is one of the things about the whole Me Too movement is, you know, what sort of punishment is appropriate uh, to be levied by society against someone when, you know, obviously, you know, there's going to be a court case. There's probably going to be a settlement. But the punishment for these Me Too court cases and these settlements don't seem to be the end of matters with a lot of these people. So, anyway, you know, and I'm not siding on, on, on the, the, the editor's side. I mean, he's... he's guy needs some therapy, okay, which he probably can't afford now that he's lost his job. And his wife resents the fact that he's incredibly flirty with every woman he sees. Maybe he's not like that with every woman he sees or meets, but those are the only interactions that you see throughout the course of the book are him being flirty. And in a lot of those instances, what he calls flirty is just flat out creepy harassment. So this was a really good read. I like the fact that it wasn't told in black and white. I like the fact that not only do you get a look into the mind of the quote unquote abuser, but also one of his friends who actually cares about him, but also realizes, man, his behavior is not okay. So if you're looking for something to read for Shorty September, I recommend this. This was really good. I gave it four stars as if that means anything. And uh, anyway, I'm Randy Wright. This is the Literate Texan. And that was my review of This is Pleasure by Mary Gateskill. I will probably be seeking out more books from this author. She's a talented writer. Uh, this was a real quick and easy read. In fact, I read it Friday night, and then I read it again Saturday morning because I knew this book was good enough and important enough to actually review, and I didn't want to... I didn't want to be able to speak unintelligent. I, I wanted to be able to speak intelligently about it. Uh, probably only partially succeeded. But at any rate, I'll be back with more videos soon. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.